Welcome back to Nine Pandas against VP, the last series of the season. As we look for that final position to head to Bali, it's all down to this one here as VP and Nine Pandas fighting over that coveted slot, Waga. Yeah, it's a bit bittersweet that it's over now. I've enjoyed these games. It's been a lot of fun, but, you know, this is the... The final chance here for these two teams, and it all really comes down to this. If you manage to turn around here as VP, if you get two back-to-back -back wins, you can still go to that major. And ultimately, you gotta bring yourself into some no-tail mentality here, right? You always needed two wins to win the series. First game <laughs> never happened. Just don't think about it, and then get those two wins back-to-back -back here. Uh, Nine Pandas, though, they're just one game away now. It's uh, it's getting close. They're almost secured for the major. Yeah, it's, it's, it's real close, and it's, it's much closer than maybe they'd uh, they'd been expecting heading into Tour 3. As Tour 1, you know, they were the, the dark horses, the underdogs, but Tour 2, they emerged as the, the top team in Eastern Europe, both, you know, uh, locally in Eastern Europe and internationally on the on the major stage. They look like the best Eastern European team out there. Uh, and, and now fighting over a slot to go to the major and fighting over these DPC points as they're currently not at the threshold of... Uh, of being guaranteed to make it looking pretty solid around a thousand points you know bet booms up there with 760 but what, what is it you get from winning two or three five five hundred points oh uh, yeah it's a lot of points for the third i think it's 500 for first place it's 300 for second place 200 for third place and then 100 here so the difference here is, like immediate difference is 100 dpc points for whoever wins this series and then obviously going to the major can secure yourself more points as well. So uh, it, it is effectively a much higher chance to, to get more points. Yeah, and this this whole threshold thing, you know, it's like right now, right here, this is the absolute threshold. If you get this, you are guaranteed. But even if you're, you know, a couple of hundred points under, and as we get to the end of the major, obviously that threshold is going to lower and lower. Um, coming third here for Nine Pandas all but guarantees them to head to TI. They'll be five points off the cutoff, and then yeah. going to the major, you know, you're the, very, very no, likely. Would, some, yeah. some wild shit has to happen for them not to go to TI if they guarantee third place. I'm pretty sure even if they go to the major and lose immediately and lose everything, they would probably still only not be guaranteed because of extremely rare circumstances. Yeah. Like, you know, this team needs to lose every game. This team needs to also not get points. So, uh, yeah, they're they're in a very good spot uh, already. If they just win this uh, win this one extra game here, remaining. they will be looking fantastic. But obviously, it's not over yet. We head into Five another draft seconds, here between uh, Nine Pandas and VP. We're starting out Pandas with Radiant the first ban on the back. Pugna and VP respecting the the bat rider and his strength as we saw last game was a big element in that game yeah the little shift up there we've, we've seen this throughout the tour right these these teams these series where bat rider is flexed so heavily you first pick him and he's like i could be mid i could be off lane could be position four you don't know and then we have these counter picks where you're like oh we've got to pick queen of pain or we've got to do this to deal with it and in the end it's a support bat and you've and kind of focused your draft in contending with a core bat rider messing things up so it's just simpler to remove him say nope none of this nonsense let's keep things on the level yeah we'll see what nine pandas are going Five to get here in. as vp think about their second band the beastmaster and pugna remove and then the bat rider of course by themselves this leaves open the techies uh currently but i don't think that nine pandas want to give away techies to vp uh as it's just such a comfort hero for fng he's very happy to get it so maybe now VP are thinking, do we want to give away the techies? Do we want to give away the Doom? You know, Doom has been a super high priority hero as well for these teams. Yeah, and then the Magnus slips into contention there as well. There, I, It really feels like whenever we get a new patch, we kind of need to have that uh, you know, go go and revert the drafting style where new patch yeah. comes, you get three bands in the first phase. And when the, <laughs> the, the patch is kind of aged a little bit, we go back to this. This 2-3-2. Two, three, two. The so Bloodseeker is going to make his way into that first phase of bands. So they've left out the Doom, the Techies, as potential picks now. That's interesting to me. The Bloodseeker ban... I mean, the, this makes the Doom first phase pick stronger than it otherwise mm. would have been, I would say. Because Doom against Bloodseeker is tough. Seconds, but Doom maybe. against a lot of other carries just demolishes. So... The fact that Five they banned Bloodseeker uh, there, I think, almost helps Nine Pandas in a way. But they have to have an idea with this. They have to have expected that Doom was going to be picked up by Nine Pandas. Now, Vietas with Bloodseeker banned out, that gives some possibility for them to run um, heroes that would otherwise get punished. 
I'm just curious about mm. it. It's uh, yeah. Yeah, not what you would expect. They do take the techies, so that much was very uh, expected here from FMG. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, usually when we Ten see this Bloodseeker ban, uh, it's an indication of a pango pick or something like that, right? It's like, oh, Bloodseeker, goddamn. Not, yeah, not, to our heroes, but not in this scenario. Not only that, it's also usually to protect your Beastmaster offlane, but Beastmaster was banned by Nine Panda, so I'm a bit confused by the Bloodseeker ban uh, myself here because I'm not sure what they want to run that like Bloodseeker would have struggled against that they think is now going to be fine. Maybe it's just Bloodseeker against Techies, you know, you don't mm. actually do that much continuous damage, he's fine against it. But normally, you look a lot towards what offlane hero it is as well. But you may be right that the this is just setting up the possibility for them to take a Pango as well. Uh, a hero that Squadix definitely monkey. can run. We'll go with a monkey, early monkey king pick up very. I mean, he, he gets banned out second phase every day of the week. Uh, when you're running something off lane like a Doom, uh, Monkey has been targeted a lot. So uh, just snag it in the first phase. Ten All right. Remaining. And uh, I guess I've been saying this a lot. FNG has been the, the Techies Five player. This could just be the safe remaining. lane for them. Techies, Monkey King. Bit of flex on the Techies to head off lane as the position four if they want to. I'm uh, curious to see what their, their plan is going to be here. Radio is there yeah. a chance that these are two supports like Monkey Sky 4? Mage. I... I mean, it's possible. You, you can definitely flex that as well. But I have a big feeling that this might just be the carry Monkey King that they want to run that against the Doom, like seeing the Doom. So it, it could be problematic telegraphing the Monkey King remaining. a little bit like this because now they get a chance to pick a mid and a carry that both are good Five against what could remaining. be the opponent's carry. Um, but yeah, the flex value is still there. I just don't see a lot of people play support Monkey King anymore. It's not really used that much. I'm not sure if say you likes to play it or not. Mm -hmm. um, not something we have seen from him before here, at least. So it complicates the draft a little bit. But I think Nine Pandas are just going to go into this game and say, okay, it's going to be a safe lane Monkey King. Maybe pair it up with the Techies, maybe with something else. We have Doom, we have Skywrath. It's fine. We can just double nuke him, throw the bolt from Skywrath and use Scorched Earth. And Monkey can't really stand and fight. Virtus so, pros turn to very bear. possible that they're just going to run the lane even into a carry Monkey King. Yeah. No real change. Probably a lane where you're even more focused on getting level 2 first. Try and make sure that Monkey King doesn't have access to a second uh, second level spell. And then you've got level 2 uh, on the Doom of that Scorched Earth Infernal Plague, which can offer so much damage. You could yep. ban on the Magnus there, the Empower. Uh, we didn't really see Five it too remaining. much in game one with that Slark being buffed up, but here with a Monkey King would offer it a ton of farming speed and damage in team fights, so a good sound ban overall. Yeah, I mean, they, they used it quite a bit in previous game, but I just called him out because I think he needed to like non stop get back. roided if they're just going to focus on farming. So, yeah, I think it would be a good fit here for them as well. Magnus has the power to bring people into the arena or closer to Monkey, which is exactly what he wants he loves having some fast food delivery like that uh and power also helps a lot pros but, turn um, the ban outs now from nine panda they're removing both the magnus and the timber saw as well respecting that that could be a good hero for vp to play higher pace that's what i kind of expected them to do in game one they got almost pulled into a lull of like slow gameplay remaining. by nine pandas now maybe vp are gonna come out swinging even more Five aggressively with this early remaining. monkey kick. yeah just keep playing forward it's yeah it's, uh, it's the we hero overlap between these two teams you know very very apparent you know they're picking heroes that both teams want to be picking they're banning heroes that they've mm -hmm. already shown in game one against the opponents that might steal it in game two uh, it's quite often the fact you get destroyed by something in the first game, and you're like, okay, right, my turn. Let's let, let's get this timber saw out, shall we? No, he gets banned out by nine pandas. Ten seconds yeah, remaining. It's a reasonable ban. Also, the morphling ban would have been Five an amazing pick remaining. against Monkey King. Turning into Monkey is just absolutely amazing. I think one of the underrated combos. Again, with Agonims destroys the Monkey because he needs the attack speed so badly. It's true for almost every carry. But turning into Monkey, that mobility is just absurd with waveform on top of it. Um, so I think it's a good removal for VP. And if you're not going to have enough lockdown, you, you want to be careful love, about letting more things slip through the drafts. Virtus Pros turn the third band to Spirit Breaker. And he's been on the rise. Mm -hmm. Interesting uh, band. But uh, again, goes towards what we were discussing that VP, you know, first game draft, hyper aggressive. The gameplay, maybe not quite as fast, but 
Spearbreaker also, Ten that type of hyper aggression minutes. hero, wants to really take non stop fighting, and Nine Pandas do not want to really allow that. Remaining. Even the Doom is almost a statement that you want to take the game, you know, a little bit slower perhaps, because you do want to run that Midas, and he's very happy to go late game. You kind of just sit back and scale. You can go for pickoffs every now and then when you have Doom ready, but overall, Doom isn't a crazy non stop fighting hero. I'm just wondering what's going to come next. Is the is the bounty tinker going to make an appearance? <laughs> like, what's the what's the kind of pick where you, know, you would get this one pick into two into one? What what's something that you see that you're like, okay, it's time. I, I wouldn't mind seeing VP play around maybe a Queen of Pain as well. I mean, obviously, yeah, they could go for some tinker stuff themselves. Uh, definitely a hero that's on the player's mind here, as you have. Nine Pandas in the mix as well, of course, with their Kyotaka Tinker Mastery, and then, like you said, VP run it in before as well. Team. But I think Queen offers Disruptor. like low cooldown, high aggression gameplay. I love this pick. The Disruptor pick, fantastic. I think he's great this patch. I was calling for it in the first game, didn't get to see it there, but um, he's gonna come out here in game number two. I think it's a strong lane combo with Monkey as a carry. So, mm. most likely, Disruptor and Monkey want to lane up together. And even if FNG plays the techies, probably going to go to the off lane and remaining. pair up the lane there. Yeah, a lot of a lot of reach from Fog. Like, these heroes just suddenly pop out of the woodwork, surprising you. A glimpse, Primal Spring, a blast off. And if you're even, even slightly out of position as, as Nine Pandas, you could get caught and picked off with this. Right, we've got the double pick team. now. Start out with a Lich, so a bit of protection. Another hero that like, oh, sits behind people and keeps them safeguarded. And there's the Pango. And knowing the Bloodseeker's out, there's none of these Windranger TB kind of deals on the table either. So a pretty safe Pango pick there. Yeah. Uh, it is pretty well protected. I mean, there's still some annoyance that Glimpse can come in. And there is Ember immediately as the reaction, which is, in my opinion, uh, like... Probably a 70-30 mid lane for Ember. Like, it's very heavily favored. It's, like, um, close to unplayable for Pango. Yeah, it's not completely, like, you know, remaining. give up and, and uh, game is over. There are room... There's Five some room for, like, remaining. outplay mechanically. But it's very, very heavily favoring the Ember Spirit, especially with him getting that extra one armor. It makes a big difference against Pango, who's such a physical hero with his Q Vita and his right clicks. Um, and Ember overall... I want to see him not go for any points in the Flame Guard in this matchup. I want to see that max QW on the lane, because that's why I've seen destroy Pango so hard before. Uh, last time we saw this matchup, it was actually scaling up Flame Guard, and he did not win the lane. He lost Ten to uh, Pango as Ember, which I don't think should happen. But interestingly in this game, Five almost feels like Nine Pandas is sending a message, right? They're taking the supports from VP of game Radiant one. It's like, back. oh, Sky and Lich, and you lost? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, sit back. We'll, we'll take Sky and Lich, please. We'll show you how it's done. This feels like a bit personal almost. Yeah, very, very targeted. Like, hey, I see, uh, I see what we can do with it. Show you how to play it. Different cores, of course. There's Pango and Doom. And give them a lot more in the team fight, a lot more chaos that they can bring to the table. But I, I like what you've been saying about VP and this this form of aggression that they they need to ride that wave of momentum coming out laning stage. Monkey King's going to give you that. Ember Spirit should be doing that as well. And if they can get Vita off the ground, I think it could look bad. good for them just to keep steamrolling forward. As we see this last round of bands, Axe and Dark are gone. VP looking for their off laner. And Nine Pandas getting Juggernaut banned up against them as it looks like they're leaving their carry till the end for the Ramses. The bands are sort of signaling that there's potential for a melee carry, you know, something that doesn't want to deal with either the spin or Five the iron shells. Remaining. Maybe even the potential for something like a PL to come out here Ooh. would be able to swarm the Monkey King in a way can be annoying. Um, yeah. Not really sure what exactly want to pair. Obviously, Alk, that would have been very, very strong for them as well. I mean, are there any like more illusion heroes out there? Naga Siren has been off the radar for a while now. Don't love their Naga combinations here. If it was more like if they had Disruptor themselves, then yeah. maybe I could have been on board, especially with Monkey Arena as well. Then you could have like Naga and then drop the combo. But here, um, I think. I mean, you brought up the Faceless Void in the previous game when you saw these two supports. Is that yep. still. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still great. It's still great against the Ember and the Monkey as well. You get some lockdown. 
Um, it hasn't been as favored. We could also see something like CK come out, um, type of hero that does pretty well in lane, can man fight, and ultimately can burst people pretty fast. They're gonna go with the Naga, okay. okay. So, it's not a horrible Naga game, but there are some annoying things for her in this game already. The Ember Spirit can do a lot of AoE damage in early game, so you really need to get quite a few uh, items remaining. before you take over the game fully as Naga. And the fact that there's a last pick Five for Beefy here, remaining. they can counter it uh, to a certain degree. I'm trying to think what would be the best hero. Not much time here for them, so tide very quickly they can cook up the Tide. Okay. Yeah, add in another layer of team fight. Uh, one, one of the worries is going to be that this, this aggression is going to lead to map control and Naga is going to get cut off. But I think that's also part and parcel in the Naga pick, right? Is if if we start getting cut off, she's got ways to weasel out on the map, get illusions and control waves, slow the tempo of the game for as long as possible because they scale decently themselves with Doom having Devour, Hand of Midas. Pango can scale with his Aghanim's build. And not looking too bad there if things get out of hand in the laning stage. Yeah, Nine Pandas, they look like they want to try and replicate a little bit what happened last game, but they do have more aggressive support combo this time, so they could play very heavily with their two supports around Kiyotaka, farm the Doom, farm the Naga, and just look for ganks non-stop with your trio. Meanwhile, VP, they kind of built this five-man, you know, big death ball potential, but they are lacking the tower damage, so it's not super high tempo. And it could get pulled into late game here. I'm going to say that I think Nine Pandas are a bit favored. Um, just on the back of that, I think they can farm. I think they can go play pickoffs and just play a farming game. And VP, you don't really threaten towers early enough here. Mm. You might even see notice like you go to the Meteor Hammer build, try and chip away at buildings uh, from an early stage. I'm mm -hmm. curious to see what what's in the minds of EP, you know, how, how they're going to get through this mentally, losing out in game one. They know that they're, they're at the bottom of the staircase trying to get up to, to the heaven of DPC points and the Bali Major. It would be such a, a big thing for VP to break into that, that pack of teams up at the top with Bet Boom and Team Spirit having already secured their places at the Bali Major already. And of course, you know, if, if you've been tuning in to Eastern Europe and you're wondering what's going on, head, you know, head over to Liquipedia, check out what's, go what's going on because there's tiebreakers coming as well, all sorts of things happening in Eastern yeah. Europe. But before we get ourselves into game two, a quick message from EGB. Bets on esports, bets on streamers, impressive bonus system, welcome bonus up to $600, cashback, artifacts, regular promotions, daily giveaways, try yourself as a bookmaker, great lines, egb.com more than just a bookmaker and here we go potentially the deciding match in this series game two of best of three nine pandas one up in the lead and waga vp they've got to come out all guns firing yeah they really do uh especially after the last game where they kind of just got controlled by nine pandas they felt like the superior team overall in the execution there as some pinks coming out as they run into each other there and i think that maybe Nine Pandas are going to be able to smell that that was a ward placement there from Spotix. However, both teams did get a ward down that wasn't directly spotted, at least. Yeah, with holding hands, nice little picnic in the forest. You get out and touch some grass before you get into the bloodbath. That is Dota 2. Yeah, the pings are coming out. He knows. Solo. He sniffed it out. Do they have sentry? They have a sentry on Skyrat, so the ward is coming. Just testing the ground, making sure there's oh, he, he nothing coming it's their way. In range, so nice D ward there, getting a little bit of golds, also getting a tiny bit of experience, but it was shared, I think, four ways. So I'm not gonna get an early <laughs> level from that from anyone really. The battle begins. But yeah, it's just even these movements to go D ward before the lanes even start. You can see them kind of tentatively walking towards it, making sure that the the buddy system is in effect. Not gonna get caught out by, by a five man smoke by VP or anything. And Bounty Runes, actually, three of them going the way of VP there. Monkey King getting a couple. And a steal from the tankies down at that bottom spot. Yeah, the sneaky move by, say, just walking in there. And Techie's, you know, pretty tanky hero early on. Has decent uh, movement speed as well. So, able to just walk in there and walk out again. And Naga can't really do too much to threaten. So, we'll see how these lanes play out. It's going to be the Lich and Naga versus Tide and Techie's bottom. As they pair up the Disruptor and Monkey King top. Yeah, already bound to strike out from the monkey. Trying to chip away at Miero in these early stages. And of course, Not level skilling. two super 
Yeah, interesting not scaling Jingu though on uh, this lane already. Hey, why, why is that? He secured range creep with it, so that's he, it? yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. He secured range creep and tried to nuke the enemy heroes a little bit, but um, if, if you just focus on hitting the enemy hero and you're playing his doom, he just scorched earth and hits creeps, so you can get outnumbered by creeps and uh, kind of lose your HP that way. Mm. It is still interesting though. I thought that you would skill bound oh uh, Jingo on this lane uh, as level one. And down at bottom, Lich trying to pull across, but Tanky's never a nuisance. Not going to stop the pull, but gets a fair amount of damage in onto the solo Lich and then get the D-Ward on the large camp to unlock his own pull. And that leaves Ramsey's in a 1v1 against the Tide Hunter. But yeah, he's doing a bit of chip damage here with the Rip Tide, but his anchor smashes in the Kraken Shell are going to give him notice. A good spot to be in this lane. Yeah, he's just saving gold as well for that Ring of Health now. He went with the Magic Stick start. Top FNG getting really low, trying for it at 9, not going to be able to get it. As uh, these bolts, over time, they added up, and Skywrath trades really well against the uh, Disruptor. Disruptor not able to uh, bully this lane the way he wins a lot of lanes. Skywrath is just uh, a little bit longer range than him, able to uh, poke from a safe distance. <laughs> They've got Frost Attack on Miera's do now as well, so if FNG gets out of position, we get slowed down inside the Scorched Earth, which can be a bit nasty. There's Devour from Miera, of course. Not going for that Infernal Blade build. We've seen apply a lot of pressure to these safe lane carries. I'm feeling comfortable to do it through the Scorched Earth AoE. That Frost attack is going to be pretty big because that's minus 25 attack slow as well when you hit oh, the Monkey yeah. King. So for running down Monkey, level 3, they have a crazy power spike at just running him. Um, so we'll see if they're going to do that. Keep an eye on it. For now, looking at mid lane a little bit. 13 yes, please and do. 5. Yeah. I'm pretty Three. even. Oh, what, what, how did this lane go in your head? You said no flame guard on the, yeah, on the Amber. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've seen this matchup a lot of times, and I've played this matchup a lot as well. Specifically, uh, this matchup, I think it's much better to go for the Searing Chains and, uh, and Q spam. But same thing here, as we see uh, in the previous series. He is going to scale up the flame guard and use that. So just a different yeah. reference here in the uh, Eastern European scene on the skill build. Yeah, was it Squadix last time who did it as well? Maybe it was Quad Extend. Yeah, it was actually. Yeah. No, it was Quad Extend as well. And he lost to the Pango last time as well. And yeah. this time, Pango's already 17 and 6 versus 14 and 2. So again, Pango is doing really good. And I would say winning this lane right now. Uh, with an interesting build. Top. Nice kill on Doom. I want to point out that the Pango is going for a 2 0 2 build. So oh. there's interesting skill builds on both of them here. Going for the Flame Guard is not going to be very effective if Kiyotaka just doesn't skill Shield Crash, so there's no magical damage to mitigate. Yeah. So that is a big reason why the Flame Guard is backfiring this hard. Last time, the Pango did skill W, but he still lost the lane to it. Um, but yeah, this is a nice little reaction by Kiyotaka. And a nice reaction by VP in turn. Guarding the water runes, getting one for Squad X in his bottle, and FNG sniping out the top one as he makes his way back up into the top lane. And spots out Antares Skywrath Mage, and that will lead to the Monkey King jumping in with his Primal Spraying. Antares turns to fight the FNG Disruptor. He's going to die in the end, though, it looks like, as Kiritich gets up his Jingu Boundless, and a hefty swipe, swipe onto Miero, and glimpse him back in for a bit more damage. Let's see if they can finish him off here with a chase forward. Monkey King trying to late. close in on him. Jump forward again, and that Thunderstrike gives the Vision a bit more damage with the final hits. The Jingu's up, and Monkey King takes another life. And now this lane is starting to get really tough for Doom. Not able to feel as safe here as the Monkey King has boots, has gloves. He's gonna get full power threats with this. And from that point on, I don't even know that you can really go up and lane safely here at all. I think maybe you need to start using jungle a bit and get your farm going elsewhere. But that's pretty simple. Doom is not Magnus. Doom is not Beastmaster. He can't do the same thing as they do and just farm the Ancients really early on. He needs this lane. Yeah, he needs to be devouring away. And Ansaras is coming to this mid lane to try and help out Kiyotaka a little bit. He takes off the Flame Guard of Squadix with some concussive shots. And gives the Pango a bit more free reign in that mid lane. But yeah, so far all the action has been mid and top. Bottom has been fairly quiet. And that's going to allow Seyush Techies to make the rotation into mid. Gets on top of the Pango, who does have a swashbuckle to get to high ground. Taking a lot of Ember's life in the process. Fake pumps the Rolling Thunder. Now it looks like he's just going to hightail it out of the mid lane. 
Solo came FNG. top, looking for something here. Not gonna go down to one more bolt here, but he has the concussive. If he can get vision, it's in range, but he doesn't see him. <laughs> they have a word oh, that don't. They can't find him. Uh, I, I, I hear a rolling thunder as well. Pango going for a move in the mid lane to try and kill off Squad X, and he succeeds at it. He's in a 1v2, gets the takedown, does get blown up by Seosh Techies with that final sticky bomb. That's just Kiyotaka out playing on mid lane. Like, he was being pressured by this Techies as well. Still manages to find a 1v2 solo kill. Gets him before he gets level 6 on the Ember. So Ember not able to get back to base and refill his HP. And it doesn't really care too much. Dying to Techies, it does sting a little bit. But still very happy with that. It's going to be Kiyotaka now. Well, that's the thing. I, I made the call that the Pango is going to hightail it out of the mid lane. I think that's the, the exact words I used. He stayed there. He knew that he could get a kill. He was probably going to either die one way or walk back to base and walk out the other. I felt that it was just more efficient, more effective. And it was to kill this, kill this Ember Spirit and die in the process. And Nine Pandas, they've made that move up top. Sticking here with a Lich in the sky. Sayush Blast Off misses, but Kiritich with his Boundless doesn't. Trying to drag him around with Sinister Gaze. The Monkey King stands with the Jingu up. Life stealing on the Lich. Frost Blast there and the Doom's final touch is not quite enough yet, but they've got the root. Ensnaring the Monkey King and trapping him. He gets the kill on Kiritich and loses the Lich. That was still a nice move by him on Lich. Even though he gets brought down in the end, he got a nice two-hero blast there. Got in range, and I like the action that they're starting to put towards top now. They're grouping up the Skyrath and the Lich to put a lot of pressure on one lane. And let the Naga just farm jungle. Solo now, TP's down bottom. There's too much experience. He doesn't want to leave all this, but he could get ravaged here. I think you can take the kill here if you're noticed. Let's TP in. They don't even need it. Monkey is here. Uh, I'll try and kill him off down bottom. We're seeing monkey... Uh, the Kangalier, even. Too many animals in this game. Rolling Thunder to kill off FNG. Uh, Solo finally dies in that bottom lane. As, yeah, like you say, Kiritik comes down there with a the Monkey King. Or Twin Gate back up the top. Uh, FNG's move to D-Ward. Loses his life for it. And his Nine Pandas keep the aggression going. Concussive shot there. Kiyotaka with a swipe gets the double kill. <laughs> You can see Kiyotaka wanted the last hit on that one. The bolt was coming in like, oh, he's already dead. You don't need to keep running on the tower. He runs in. He wants that double. Wants the extra bit of gold on his pangle. Having a fantastic start here. And uh, he's also going to go in and find a little treasure cove here. Steals <laughs> two bounty runes. Going to get a nice amount of refill from that. Get his HP back up. Backpacking everything. Oh, there's oh. a sneaky oh. looking. That one is not oh. like the others. Oh, oh. Here it is. Yeah, here we go. The sneaky tree comes in onto Miero, but he throws the doom onto the Monkey King. Antara still not level six yet, so no Mystic Flare here, sadly, for Nine Pandas. And they lose the doom, <laughs> expending both the ulti and the hero. Not getting anything in the trade. Uh, he'll be able to heal up uh, a little bit afterwards here, though. He'll be fine. Nice kill for them. For now, the game is, you know, opening up a little bit with the fact that uh, this offlane Tidehunter noticed managing to take the tier 1 tower. And that's without him going for even the Meteor Hammer build. He's still the, the going meme for... hammer. I heard oh, that. <laughs> oh, yeah, he has the meme hammer now. Okay, he. <laughs> He just got the tower before he got it completed. Going for the mana boots first as well. So, didn't fully rush it. You know, could have gone for the, the no mana boots in the meme hammer. But he goes back for it and has it now available. Yeah, he's, he's pressured this Naga pretty hard. 3.6k Naga Siren, bottom of the cause in net worth. Been kicked out of the lane. Kiyotaka, top net worth on the Radiant side, trying to keep this reign of oppression going in the mid lane. And rolling up the Seosh with the Rolling Thunder Frost Shield, he'll claim. Techie's life. Might get caught here, though. A squad X chasing him with a flame guard. Bit of backup from the Disruptor with a glimpse to drag him back. Kiyotaka gushed and swashes northwards. But they've got remnants and plenty to chase him down. Burn him to a crisp with the flame guard. And down he goes. Finally secure that kill. Smoke up as well. And they're chasing. They do have the movement speed on FNG here to maybe get the glimpse. They also have high ground vision. Yeah, I'll jump in straight with the remnant. Another chains into Gush, physical damage galore. And Skyrath Mage, the cherry on top, as it oh, looks like VP relentless with their moves, considering the dive into tower with a great glimpse back into the static storm. FNG bouncing from one lane to the other, finding huge pickoffs. This is some insane tempo they're getting right now. They're just crushing down. This is the VP I wanted to see in game one. The level of play they're doing right now is just, you know, not respecting your opponents. Just rush at them. And mid-tier one tower taking a lot of damage. The tank Tidehunter channels 
this meme hammer, and that's gonna be Radiant's it. Middle tower has fallen. Yeah, just plonks himself in that mid lane. Still with a Ravage ready. Don't want to be fighting into that as nine pandas. But yeah, we still need time. Doom just got his Midas, so needs, you know, ten minutes to get up to where he wants to be. Nargus Siren, like we were saying, bottom of the net worth of the cores, needs tons of time, tons of space here. The big story is Doom. Do Doom is just not going to have an impact in this game because of how top lane went. And he's really the one that's a problem for them now to try and deal with. And he's just going to have to keep running to lanes and try and find what farm he can. It's Squadix trying to set something up here. Only has the one point searing chains, but maybe take his Silence or a stun, I mean. Now the Scarath Mage is here trying to back up Kiyotaka and Tankies with the two proxy mines. One gets killed, but the other blows up. Sayush so dying just to that rolling thunder. Yeah, I think his jump was probably a little bit too late on Tankies anyway, but Solo did grab him mid-air with the Sinister Gaze, pulling him out of his stun. The Tidehunter backstab. <laughs> he's not sneaky and he's not speedy, but they've got a glimpse of a static storm. And it looks like that's all they'll need to kill the Pango with a Meteor Hammer connecting. Kiyotaka <laughs> swashes under tower. Still going to die as Antares getting run at by FNG and noticed. Tempo is just way too high. Glimpse up in two seconds. Keeping vision on him here. And they get it. it was there it is. Lingering vision was still there. And the Ember Spirit going to join in. Illusion rune out of the Ancient Seal. Pop out. Kill Antares. And noticed. Thinking about really diving under this tier two, and with that slight change, probably have enough to kill Solo here. Does get the Sinister Gaze out, but dies in the end. They just don't have enough heroes. I, they, they can't play the game right now. The Doom and Naga, I did say during the draft that ideally you want them to be farming and play around the three, uh, the trio of the Lich, Sky, and Pangle. Well, that trio is not strong enough to deal with everybody completely alone. You need to have pressure on side lanes. Naga is just jungling. Doom can't even show his face on lane, and that opens up the game for VP to play this hyper-aggressive, uh, just, you know, all the heroes running and fighting into this Pangle, Sky, and Lich. They cannot withstand it. They still haven't even expanded the Ravage. The Ravage is still there. The threat of the Ravage forcing them yeah. to not go into this five-man engagement, and VP playing the final tier one power. Yeah, there it is. Easy as you like. I mean, just looking at like the net worth difference and the kill difference, it, it doesn't seem by the numbers that VPR is you know, super far ahead or dominating. But uh, when you're in this game and you're playing as nine pandas and you get into their heads, you think this this game is suffocating. It's, in, it's insufferable. You're just being run at. You've got nowhere to be. What, what, what do you do as the Lich and the Scarath Mage? Just sit behind the pango. You know, just kind of wait to see what unfolds in front of them. They have to play towards Pango. They have to play maybe towards Doom. Perhaps they can find a big ulti and fight with Amazing that. Uh, but for now, it looks like Doom just wants to farm. Radiant They're trying to steal scary. the Wisdom Rune. That's what Antares is doing now. Obviously, their own Wisdom Rune is being secured. Save is building a minefield over there. Doom gonna go up and try and clear it. Oh, Nero. Well, he cleared it. He did. He nearly lost a leg for jumped it. jumped him there, he would have solo killed him. So Doom <laughs> definitely gambling there, you know. I gambled, you lost kind of moment. Yeah. Dyer's bottom tower. It's pretty close. Attack. We do get to yeah. that Diffuser Blade on Pango at long last. And Monkey King just finished off his Maelstrom, so matching these item timings. Yeah, Monkey King with Echo and Maelstrom, though, is looking pretty damn strong. And uh, also, this is time that the Ember's building up. And when you have two Maelstroms in your team, the Naga already is kind of soft countered until she gets art. So it will take a while for her to really be able to join fights. Dyer's Triple zero Ramses. No kill participation out of the seven they've got. Nine pandas are smoked up. Two supports with the Pango. This is their gank squad. Let's see if they can connect with somebody. They know that Kiritich is clearing illusions on that right hand side. And they'll go straight in on him with a Mystic Flare and Rolling Thunder, crashing into Monkey King, who's still alive. Maybe he can jump out where the pipe popped and the raindrops there. Kiritic still up and running. Nine pandas couldn't secure the kill. Now they'll lose solo. And the chase is on to try and find Kiyotaka. Thunderstrike vision, glimpse in the storm, and the Monkey King stands tall. Squad X with a double kill as he backstabbed and claimed Antares life as well. Yeah, having the spectator bug really annoys me because I can't fully see the Mystic Flare there, but the damage was just lacking. They didn't really do enough uh, to bring him down there. We see that, you know, a lot of damage was dished out by the Skyrath in the fight overall, but Lich wasn't close enough to join the fight. So they needed to somehow burst Monkey 
with just Pango and Sarah, and they don't have sufficient items for that. There's no Mel's from Pango. I mean, they can't even kill a Techies? The Doom and the Naga just doomed the Techies, ran at him, they don't kill him, and Miero's the one who's a tell between like trying to run away, but Monkey King is overstepped. He jumped in to try and fight, gets killed off. A little bit overconfidence there, and that gives a big payday over side of Ramses and the boys here. 800 gold kill. There's some incredible scenes. Oh yeah, Techie survives, Monkey King. Just handed over on a silver platter. Yeah, we saw the strength of the pipe from Notice in that bottom lane fight. Keeping the monkey alive. Pipe up for Notice means that a lot of this early magic damage from Sky and Lich can be mitigated heavily. Force back the glimpse here as well. F and D channeling that with a meme hammer, and that forces out the ulti. So Pango ulti on cooldown. That's all they wanted. No real commitment there for VP. Now they can think about a tier two tower. No Pango ulti available. Right, keep the pressure on. My Sayers has done such a great job. We've seen a lot of these tankies just pick a lane. I guess it's the FNG style. He's told Sayers, "Hey, just pick a lane, stay there, pretend you're a beast master, plant, plant mines, and keep pushing." That's also true, yeah. He's doing sort of the same thing. We'll see if he takes the Proximity Mines cooldown talent as well. He hasn't skilled up the talent yet, as he's put 10 points in his abilities, but uh, let's see if he takes that Proximity Mines as well that FNG likes to take. I can start mining up the Twin Gates. And Miero not feeling comfortable in his own skin, hiding in the trees, but scouted by Squadix. Chains and a gush. FNG arriving from the right-hand side. Gonna keep vision over the Doom. It looks like he's too tanky for them just to full on commit and dive under the tower. The pipe is doing it a lot of work against this magic damage coming in from VP. Oh yeah, two man chains though. Might be the opening here for Notice with the Ravage ready. Sees Kiyotaka now and he's going to chuck it at them with a static storm to stop any kind of rolling thunder play. And the Pango, well, it's on cooldown so it wouldn't have worked out anyway. Kiyotaka going to jump over with his shard out and the shield crash. He swashes in and FNG. Well, he's going to die but Squad X has already cleaned up pretty nicely. Two supports down on VP's side, but two core kills and the Lich dying while Ramses, what's he up to in the mid lane? Uh, <laughs> Fighting the Monkey King. He was trying. He almost got the kill on him. Very close there. As he gets a shield rune, now gonna keep himself safe on Kyrtik, but that was a nice attempt at making a move there on uh, Naga. Had he had his Orchid already, perhaps, then he could have already gotten that kill. But Squadix now talked about how he didn't do too hot in the lane, but this Ember, 6, 1, and 5 after that engagement bottom. Very, very strong. And almost has to pull BKB. Only a thousand gold away. That's oh, going to improve his chances in these fights significantly. Oh, Sayush. Oh, no. Techies. Oh, they're going to run away from him. They're scared of him. Yeah, they don't have enough to bring him down. They didn't have the Skyrath ulti available, and they know the Taser just stops Naga from hitting him, so not going to risk it chasing him. FNG, drops a ward, find Solo. Hello. Well, howdy. I'm trapped inside the kinetic field now. And these two supports, the waddling tide will join in. But it is the techies that takes down Solo. Oh, the captain of nine pandas can, can go on captaining, even while dead. Yeah. Good thing as a support, at least you have something still, some duty. Can't really form when you're dead. Plus one players, just go AFK. We do see Naga right now taking over the net worth. She is at 11,500 net worth. Only 500 ahead of this Tide though. This Tide is huge. And his, the other horse are also soon following. And they've caught Kiyotanka again with his glimpse Static Storm. Notice doesn't have the Ravage though, so Kiyotanka gonna make his way and edge out of the team fight with a rolling thunder i uh, just has to reset though he doesn't have ulti anymore now and he's too low hp to really chase in with ulti so just gonna dip out again and nine pandas not really finding a lot of engagements where they can make something happen vp doing a pretty good job at being proactive and make moves on the map yeah, i mean vp are just continually ready now you've got monkey king bkb he can go back into whatever he wants with that Oblivion Staff, whether he wants to reassemble the Echo Saber or thinks about the Bloodthorn. Ember Spirit, you talked about his BKB, which is very nearly there. So we've got this confluence of items, the mech, the pipe, the BKBs. VP become increasingly tanky and more difficult to kill. Oh, man, oh, Kiyotaka. Hey, he doesn't have ulti, but he has shard. He has the roll up at least. Glimpse was on cooldown, thankfully for him as well. 
Yeah, I mean, they, they pulled him back once, but his team wasn't close enough on Disruptor to try and catch there. Trying to get himself out. I mean, look at this Tide. He's just always on the forefront. He was pushing top aggressively. He pushed mid, standing on the opposite side of the river. And now he's shoving bottom as well all the way. This is so annoying for Nine Pandas because they don't have a hero to deal with him. And that's going to be a tier 2 tower. Yeah, he feels like the Timber did in the last game. Just got complete freedom. What, what is he? He's like 308 on the tide. Untouched, as noticed. But now we get to the Naga Heart. Now, Roshan hasn't been taken yet. We could still look for Nine Pandas to, to kind of bolster their efforts, maybe feel strong about things. She has the heart, but this is like a sort of rushed heart. She doesn't have a full um, full build with it. She doesn't have an Orchid with it. Doesn't have a Diffu with it. it it's not um, as impactful as if she had more items along with it. Her DPS is kind of low. It does enable her to take Roche or uh, Tormentor pretty easily here as uh, Roche is being taken by BP. So at least they're going to get something for themselves. Yeah, quick little shard take. This is, yeah, I mean, finishing the last part is taking a while for her, but can I get it in the end? That's going to be a Lich shard, so definitely not a bad one. Definitely better than getting it on the Skyra. Um, so they're going to be happy with that, but also bottom lane forcing out the ulti here from Kiyotaka again. These glimpses. Yeah. This is why I'm calling for Disruptor, man. Look at how good this hero is. He's dominating, forcing so many glimpse, uh, ulti uses to the glimpse, and also finding so many kills. FNG been involved in 14 out of the kills so far I guess, like four times in a row 18 second cooldown glimpse rolling thunder is what like 80 9 85 seconds yeah solo is just dead poor guy he's out in the wide open it looks like vp just gonna leave him to the monkey king while the rest of them get in on top of miero tp cancelled by the sayers blast off solo dead and the doom in trouble slain by the five man move from vp the polar bear comes to claim his prize the pandas, they're cowering and hiding. I almost can't believe that. He's a 1,000 gold kill? The Doom? <laughs> How Devour is he Midas. 1,000 gold? He's so poor. I, I'm baffled, dude. What? Uh, yeah, okay. Well, 1,000 gold for killing the Doom, who has absolutely no game here. He's... I guess he has built up his net worth. He is more farmed than the Ember if we're looking strictly at that. So it, it makes some sense, but it's still surprising to see a hero who couldn't lane at all, hasn't had any real impact so far, Radiant's and then you kill him for the you attack. know sixth time, and you get a thousand gold. Yeah, yeah it's pretty wild. I, I guess also you know there's not a big gap between the two teams in overall net worth. It's pretty tight as the the metrics go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty hefty payday there for VP getting that kill. I think that's, that's definitely still the underlying thread, though, right? The fact that VP have been aggressive. Yes, we like that. They've taken control of the map. They've got Roshan, have Aegis, ready to strike at any given moment. But Nine Pandas have this Naga. Nine Pandas have a Doom who's scaling, and Pango, who's had a rough game, but he's not completely out of things. Yeah, he's not. No, he's... I mean, the Aghanims will be a big timing here for Nine Pandas to try and play around. Getting the Aghanims for Pango is... Uh, you know, gonna increase his damage output solo. <laughs> just has no way out here. He's being toyed with. <laughs> well, Frustration ulti. There's that funny moment where he put down his spire and it's like a challenge of, yeah, 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 you, you sure you want to dive me? Both the Ember and the Tide turned and run, run away for a second. <laughs> Gave a moment for the Disruptor to come in and clear up, displace the Lich a bit. Well, yeah, FNG's well, on the hunt again. I mean, it's, it's been the FNG show. Find a kill top, the TP bottom. Knows the real one's there. And inside the Static Storm allows the Ember to get on top of the Naga. With the Monkey King BKB, they'll ensure the death of Ramses. Man, FNG is just playing clean this game. He, he's not there in time for that glimpse uh, on the TP out there. But that's because he was backing out from the Naga, making sure if she got her ulti out somehow then he would be outside of the range of the ulti and still glimpse her if she TP'd. So he's so heads up. Radiant's FNG is playing like a madman in this game too. He is everywhere. He's ganking everything. He doesn't look like a boss 5. He looks he, he looks so impactful the way he's playing this game. Yeah, it's been incredible. That's a pretty big courier snipe there by the tankies as well. The majority of the Pango's Aghanim Scepter. I don't know if it's by the shop or where it was. And he's lost out on that for two minutes now. And he's being eyed up here as a juicy treat. VP coming in behind Kiyotaka. Let's see if they can find him. He's got that rolling thunder and the roll up as a bit of safety. And he does roll up to stop the glimpse. 
finally getting Spotics. away from the not, grasps not of not FNG. The, he, he didn't abuse the Ember trick when there's... He had 10 targets there on the Slide of Fist. You can use a certain trick to guarantee the Searing Chains cast when you're on top of the hero you want to cast it on top of. We can talk more about that later, though. Is there... Going for a counterplay here, nine pandas. Yeah, the smoke. Revealed. It breaks, and the jump is there, straight out from the doom onto FNG's disruptor. He's out of the fight for 45 seconds. That there is still a tier one here as a bit of protection for VP. And Kiritik Monkey King, lurking atop the canopy, waiting in the trees. Jumps down, two man balance, ravage there, and notice sets up with the Wukongs out. They've got the Naga. Ramsey's dead, and Doom will follow him. Down and down to the layers of hell they had as Kiritish comes out with a triple kill. That was very nice synergy between the two of them. Good timing to start there. Kiritish just biding his time, waiting for Notice to get close enough. And then they just blow them up there. Really beautiful. And a triple kill for his efforts there. Going to get close towards the Aghanim Scepter and Monkey King with that. It's so incredibly strong. We just see there the Naga Siren. Yes, you're tanking it. You can... You can withstand some of this onslaught from VP, but you can't really turn around and fight once it comes. And Kiyotaka, a roll TP. Oh, will it do the glimpse? No, he still yeah, has the roll can, going. It was a bit early. You can cast glimpse while he rolls, but you have to wait towards the end of the roll Radiant so that the glimpse takes effect attack. when he's no longer in the roll. Yeah. Does that make sense? So he precasted a little bit too early. Uh, but of course, he was invis on the pango, so it was pretty hard. If he waits, he's just going to lose vision of the pango. Not be able to glimpse him. Right, so what's this Ember Trick? Uh, okay, so Ember Trick is that when you slide a fist, if there's a lot of targets, like top there were 10 units on the lane, and you want to Searing Chain specifically on the Pangle, you can move click during the slide of fist onto the Pangle, and then shift click after the move click, oh. uh, Searing Chain on him. That will make it so that when your hero moves on top of the targets that you want a Searing Chain, it will cast the Searing Chain there. Uh, he didn't do that because he cast the Searing Chain uh, at the bottom of the creep wave. And as a level 30 Ember Spirit, Squadix, I'm expecting you to do this. I want to see those big <laughs> poggy plays here. You're a hero spammer. I expect you to do all these little nasty things to give yourself an edge. Um, of course, it's very tricky to do, though. You have to be very fast at clicking. And I'm no Ember player, so I definitely wouldn't be able to do it myself. But it's a trick. You could have used that. Well, you've got to have vision. You've got to have knowledge of where they're going. Get the fast clicks out. And it's Kiyotaka. Rolls up to dodge the glimpse again. Now with the Rolling Thunder in. A fight brewing further south as VP were trying to close in onto this Tormentor area. They snipe out Solo's Lich for now. I swear that's like the seventh ulti that he has to use just defensively on Kiyotaka. He is so unhappy with the pacing of this game. Everywhere he goes, he gets forced to pump his ulti just to get out and if you keep doing that you can't really go for any big place you need your mid laners ulti you need kiyotaka in order to win bites and right now they're not finding that yes they have a naga building up though and when she gets her butterfly timing she'll have a bit of a power spike that's gonna be hard to deal with because monkey king despite his name does not have his bar yet uh so he won't be able to man fights 1v1 but their spell damage is amazing still they have double maelstroms they have techies they have disruptor they can still burst the, the naga even without strike and what about the doom as well because he's been racing up that net worth board bkb coming reasonably soon still working on it he needs the full recipe debating on naga bottom doom is just sitting behind trying to protect it I'm trying to get these item timings. I've definitely uh, got past that first Aegis from VP. I'm going to start looking towards that next Roshan. 30 seconds for fast spawn right now that we know. Yeah. Kyrtik has his Aghanim Scepter on Monkey King. Good power spike for him. Going to get those soldiers. And tormentors to be ground. What was it? We, we just had a Wisdom Rune a couple of minutes ago, right? 28? Yeah, so. Yeah, it's 35. Yeah. 35, the next one. Quick Tormentor. Minutes. Got some time. Very fast taken there. Disruptor gonna get himself the shard, so way to get Vision far away. Can be useful for him. He's still working on his Aghanim Scepter, by the way, on FNG, so despite having a very good game in terms of impact, he hasn't gotten his first item yet, but when he gets the Aghanim Scepter, it is massive impact. If he ever lands that ulti, or the BKBs, uh, you know, can be clicked, you'll be fine. That puts the vision inside Roche. 
Let's see what's going on over there. Is it is a pretty quick spawn. FNG is going to find it, surely. Oh, he's walked away and there's no Thunder Strike anymore. No, FNG, Rushman. Rushman's back up. Oh, no. Worst case scenario. But they got vision of it there. Oh, is the Thunder Strike still there? Yeah, the Thunder Strike was still there. It, it was still lingering for a little while, but they're pushing out lanes really hard here, trying to fix as Nine Pandas are shoving in mid and top. And, uh... They're taking the time, getting control here, taking over the outpost as well, boarding up, and now probably gonna fall back and go into the Roche and finally take it. I'm looking at these uh, Monkey King Agnims clones, and they have this funny blue ball over them. These cosmetics, I think. Small help. Solo. In danger. Don't really want to jump a support, though, if it's a big fight. Noticed. Smoked it up. Ready with his Blink Ravage. Not going to need to expend it. Just the tendrils of the deep to clip onto Solo. Ogre Seal Totem puts him back into danger, though, as Kitaka with his Rolling Thunder crashes into the back lines and moves in towards the Ember again. As he's just zoning away VP. Not looking to properly fight as Nine Pandas right here. Yeah, going to get out again. An ulti used by Pango and not really getting too much for it. Yeah, that Ogre Seal Totem was a little bit unfortunate there. Going towards the wrong dart. They actually have two Ogre Seals as well in the team. That one on the on the Pango, which is pretty interesting. I haven't seen someone use the Ogre Seal during roll. I don't even know how that interaction works, but I assume that you can Ogre Seal during the roll as well and move yeah. a little bit faster. I'm pretty sure you can. I, I know for sure you can do pretty fun stuff in Ability Draft with uh, Rolling Thunder and Skewer and Blink and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Have you ever seen Harpoon during Pango Roll? That's a good think, one. I don't think I have, You can just no. click Harpoon on someone and pull yourself. So, like, if you go past them, you can then Harpoon backwards onto them. Uh, Excellent. And I think, it even, I think it even turns your hero facing them, like, when you arrive. Um, anyway, during this uh, mechanical talk, we see uh, Leaky starting up that roach. Or taking it down pretty fast, despite the Aghanims from Monkey Inn no longer helping on this. Gone are the days of Monkey just soloing Roche by watching his soldiers do it for him. Yeah, let the Terracotta army go to work. Absolutely no contest from Nine Pandas. Agnum Scepter up for Disruptor as he finishes that glorious item. Aegis for Monkey, Cheese for Ember. And VP. It's a mild net worth lead, but as we were talking about 10 minutes or so ago, they are still the ones in the driving seat, really dictating the pace of play. And Nine Pandas just kind of thinking, in, t in 10 minutes we'll be fine. Hey guys, one more, one more item. We can, we can fight then. It's yeah. always an uphill battle, though. They're getting there, though. They're getting to the point where this Naga will be really problematic to fight. She's finishing up an Eye of Scotty next. She's gonna go for the the Bloodthorn as well, paired up with this. Already has the Orchid, of course. And they also are going for a Nullifier on Pango, which I love the choice to go for that here. A little bit unconventional on Pango, not really the most common item on him, but it's still a ton of armor, and the dispel against the Monkey King is fantastic. You can remove the Jingu, and you can also remove stuff like the Taser, the Mjolnir. Naga runs into Techies here. Uh oh, yeah. runs into everyone here. Here comes Ramses. That's a big song. Four heroes. Man, Monkey what? King with a BKB. Boundless Strike stops Ramses. FNG's ecstatic as the puts the Naga back in, pops the mirror image, but blasted off, and VP. Take down that top net worth hero here with ease. Ouch. Yeah, that's that's really tough for them now. Losing the Naga, not having Song as well. Of course, the BKB was used on Monkey. He has Aegis, he doesn't care. Uh, the high ground push is coming. Beautiful heads up play there by Kirtik as he saw the Song TP. He quickly reacted, TP jumped in and stuff. And the creeps yeah, got up. close enough. <laughs> they can push right now. Frost shields up, but the back door regens down. I think that will protect the barracks at least. This should be completely safe with the glyph as well. Not even the tower is going to go down. Man, they've kept it up. You're right. Oh, nine pandas. But only time for the Naga to respawn. Don't want to be spending my back on her. It's impossible. They can't really push like this. The creep wave is coming soon, but this is biding time for Naga. Back to a regen. Still there, boys. Heritage noticed. Just holding that front line as Squad X puts the fear of God into Nine Pandas with a, a very forward remnant placement. Monkey King still has that Aegis, of course, so pretty free here just to stand his ground and hit the buildings. 
Uh, they're trying, but the disarm though, coming in, this pango spam and the lit armor, it's very difficult for him. And even the pipe to protect from the mines, the buildings being safe and at all costs here. No mines, no meteor hammer, no nothing. Yeah, I mean, VP, there, they're retreating now. Coming out into the mid lane, looking at the Nagasaren, but Ramsey's going to slip away. They do have the BKB off cooldown again for Kyrdyx, so he is ready to fight, but it's tough. He's being poked at so much by this Pango. It's really hurting him. Yeah, I mean, it's Pango with Diffusal, Bash, Dragon, and Scepter. <laughs> Kyrdyx having a tough game, but again, it's a situation where he's he's made sure that every death he's had has been getting himself to that next item. Never really losing out too much gold and keeping his net worth up there in contention with the rest of them. VP, five heroes strong, just rallying around their Monkey King right now. Just under two minutes of Aegis timing, so this last outer tower should be theirs to claim. And here comes Kiyotaka. Rolling Thunder with a shield crash in. The Doom jumps on the Monkey King. Kiritich dead the first time. And Kiyotaka bouncing onto FNG as he'll dance away with a swashbuckle now. Miero trying to get this target. Does Doom up with the AoE Doom. Reflected back, Monkey King gonna swipe down on Solo. The Static Storm's there on Ramses. Controlled up with the Meteor Hammer landing. The Naga Siren looks dead. She is dead. 80 seconds on the sidelines. These oh, no. Dooms and Chain Frost, they did very little as VP. They're standing tall, only one hero lost. Uh, that was a great Lotus Orb right there. I think that was very crucial for them to win the, uh, the fight. And Techies with the Lotus ready to protect when Monkey respawned. Casts back the Aghanim's buffed up Doom onto Doom. And of course he had to just try and disengage from the fight from there. But that left Naga really alone. Naga got isolated. And like I said, even if they don't have MKB, it doesn't really matter. They have so much AoE damage. This Aghanim Scepter Ember Spirit is able to dish out tons of damage with continuous Light of Fists. Even has the Shard and the Ceremonial Robe. Kaya-san, she's got a nice amount of Spell Amp with this and magic resistance reduction ultimately naga you know even with all this farm she worked so hard the entire game she can't really become unkillable in this game she needs her team to have impact they need to play together and get a good execution otherwise the fight is impossible yeah you can be as stacked as you want but you, you die inside a stack storm nonetheless but it, it is still pretty funny how that works though with the like monkey has ags so when the Lotus is on him and the Doom's cast on him, yep. he is the one casting the Ag's Doom back onto the Doom. I thought it was Doom casting Aghanim's Doom at Same. first, and I got angry at him a little bit because I was like, why did you let the, the Monkey King BKB? You should have doomed yourself before he respawned. But then I realized, wait a second, that's not his Doom, that's the reflected Doom. Uh, I just checked him a few seconds before as well, but then, you know, in, in the moment it looked like, wait, you had Aghanim's all this <laughs> yeah. time? It got Wait, confusing. Where was that? And then it was like, why, why did he move away from the Monkey King? Because he could have stuck there on him. Look at the map right now, by the way. Even if you were to break out, look at this alarm system set up by Techies. The map is red. It's colored with dots from the Techies. He has so much intel here. Of course, the Naga Illusions can clear a lot of them. But even so, it will work as a nice system to keep some vision here and heads up when movements come out from 9 panels. Yeah, yeah, let FNG know when he's when he's needed, when he's required yeah. with his glimpses. And Nine Panda's looking there. to looking to mount a defense of this bottom lane, not allowing VP to come into the base. They get the Doom down on the Monkey King with a Mystic Flare there, but Kiritich still alive. The Rolling Thunders are crashing, but Squadex, he's in the back lines. They've glimmered up the Monkey, got him to safety. Miero, Ramsey chasing in. Oh, they're trying to run away. I thought they were going after Squadex, but Squadex is coming after them. The Naga song from Ramsey's is out, but his TP is on cooldown. He has to stand and fight here. Yeah, goes in onto FNG. Last ditch effort from Nine Pandas. Blast off in from Sayosh. And it's surrounded as five. Ramses can't stand and fight. GG called by Solo. And we go to a game three. The all deciding best of one remains. Yeah, they're going to take it to game three here. It's going to be VP winning game two. That was a really, really deciding last fight there. And you know what came down? They couldn't see the Monkey King. Can't see him because the supports were zoned. They were not close enough. The supports got disjointed and a simple Glimmer Cape, despite the double doom there, the Glimmer Cape just saved the Monkey King. He could walk away just fine, come back into the fight. And if you don't win the fight quickly there, you don't win the fight at all as Nine Panda. So they get brought down and VP, they force a final best of one deciding game here for who gets to go to the major and who gets to sit at home and be sad.
Yeah, and who gets all these DPC points? So we'll have a quick break and return with game number three, the last one of regulation play. We'll see you in a few minutes.